Joshua chapter number 1, and beginning at verse number 1. Joshua chapter number 1, verse number 1 says, Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. What a promise. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and under the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and be of good courage. For unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then shalt thou have good success. How many... How many understands God will bless you if you do what he says? You know, some people get confused in that. Say, well, I can just, you know, God's just going to bless me regardless. No, that's not what God's word says. And we just read it right there. He says, as long as you keep my word, as long as you keep the law, you're going to have good success. You're going to be, you're going to be blessed. I'm going to prosper your way. Verse 9 says, have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither th uh, be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Three times God speaks to Joshua here, and he says what? Be strong and of courage, or good courage. Be very courageous. He uses these three, uh, three times, and three is also a number of perfection, like the number seven, or completion. And uh, so three times he tells Joshua, I will be with you, only be strong and courageous. Preaching from the title this morning, Be Strong and Courageous. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege to be in your house. We thank you for the privilege to lift up your name and exalt you today. Father, I thank you for everyone that is here. I thank you for everyone that is tuned in by Facebook right now. Lord, desire us to hear your word. Desire us, Lord, to grow in you. Father, help us, Lord God, as we uh, face each and every day. We just ask that you would just help us to, Lord, be in the center of your will and to be obedient to your commands. And Father, I just ask that you would anoint this word. Help me to bring it forth, Lord, as is needed to, Lord, the hearer today. Father, I ask that you would anoint me because I cannot do it apart from you. Father, I ask it in Jesus' name. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. In this history that we've just read, Moses, the greatest leader that Israel has ever known, has just died in Moab. And matter of fact, God buries him, Scripture says. God buries him in a place that, as far as we understand, and according to what, as the word ends there, that is even not known unto this day. The children of Israel grieved for Moses there for 30 days in Moab. Their hearts were heavy. They grieved for uh, their precious leader that had left. Joshua, of course, was Moses' protege. Everywhere that Moses was, I mean, Joshua was right behind him, following in his footsteps. He fought as a general for Moses in, Israel, in the Israelite army. He went part of the way up the mountain, if you will remember, when Moses went up to receive the Ten Commandments. I mean, everywhere Moses would go, Joshua would be with him. Uh, he was fearless. He was full of faith. 
And he was always loyal to the commands of his godly leader. Everything that Moses asked of Joshua, he obeyed. He was a loyal follower. And God was pleased with Joshua. Don't you want the testimony that you please God? Joshua was pleasing to God. Matter of fact, he was so pleased that now that Moses was gone, he wanted Moses' young protege, Joshua, to fill Moses' shoes. He wanted him to lead Israel into the land that God had promised Abraham would be to his seed forever as an inheritance. Can you imagine in this moment what's running through Joshua's mind as he's hearing God say this? Can you imagine uh, what's going through his heart? He's saying, probably, me? Take the place of Moses? For real? How can I possibly fill the shoes of Moses? He spoke with you, God, face to face. How could I possibly fill those shoes? I just followed what you told him. I was a yes man. I just followed what you told him to say and told him to do. I'm real good at following orders, but I don't know how to give them. Maybe all these things run across Joshua's mind. You know, it's amazing how many things can run across our mind in a little bit of time. You know, when you're about to have a car wreck, and it seems like, you know, everything slows down. So many things can run through our mind in just one instance of time. This leads us into our first point this morning. As a believer, you can't always just be a follower. Sometimes you will be asked to lead. Now, I'm not meaning just in the respect that you're going to be a teacher, a preacher, you're going to be, a, you know, a, a lead up this group or that group, but sometimes God's going to put you out front. Sometimes you're going to have to speak up when nobody else is speaking up. I said sometimes he's going to call you to lead. Joshua no doubt was scared. Any human being in his place to think of the magnitude of this following into the footsteps of Moses you'd be scared out of your mind he had always been the helper and now he was asked to do something that he had never done before and not only that but he had to follow a class act there was nobody that was as meek and humble the Lord said on the earth as Moses, is, as Moses was. I mean, he's a class act. No doubt he had his apprehensions. No doubt he wondered if he was up to the task. Can I do this? He might have said, how can I possibly lead over a million people? I've heard him gripe and grumble and complain. Amen. I've seen Moses cry and say, just kill me, God. <laughs> <laughs> or just take me on home. <laughs> As I, I, I just can't have, I'm not better than my fathers. How can I possibly do this? But let me tell you, if God says you can, you can have confidence that you can. Amen? Amen? If God says that you can, you'll be able to succeed in whatever he places before you. He tells Joshua, he says, I'm going to be with you just like I was with Moses. And thank God this morning he's no respecter of persons. What he does with one, he'll do with another. Hallelujah. He said, if you'll obey me, if you'll follow my commands, if you'll do what I ask, you will have success. I don't know about you, but I like success. I, I like fishing just like everybody else, but I, I'd rather fish and bring something back home. Amen? I want to have success in the things that I do, in the things that I put forth. Joshua is being called by God to lead this vast army of people. And God says that he can. You see, God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies who he calls. It doesn't matter if you have a rubber stamp from somebody 
It doesn't matter if you uh, have a, uh, an ordination from the assemblies of God. It doesn't matter if you're, quote, uh, you know, have a paper to preach. What matters is did God call you? Did God, God affirm to you what you are doing or what you're about to do? Joshua was frightened, I'm sure. That's probably why God addresses him three times. Think about it. I, I'm thinking if he, if he says it once, you know, it's, it's kind of like Peter and feed my sheep. He's going, feed my sheep, Pete, and he's probably going, I said... So God is reaffirming, no doubt, to Joshua, be strong, be courageous. I see where your heart's at. I see that your heart, church, so so many times when we are faced with obstacles, we will try to crawl dead. Our heart, naturally, our flesh will try to crawl dead and back up, I, 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 I can't. There's no way that I can do this. There's no way that I can do that. But God says, be strong and courageous. The word strong means, uh, in the Greek, to have courage or confidence. I love to have confidence. Amen? But we know we can't get too big for our britches, right? No doubt Joshua was not too big for his britches. I'm sure that he was having a struggle there, and that's why God says, be strong, have confidence. Have confidence. Uh, This is a uh, confidence, uh, here is faith. It's faith in God. It's faith in God. No doubt we got to have confidence too. You know, how many has ever God told you you could and you was like, uh, I don't know God. He wants us to have confidence that we'll put our foot forward. But the main thing is he wants us to have faith and confidence in what he said. This is a spiritual aspect. This is uh, faith in, in our spiritual part, in the spiritual man. He also says to be courageous, and that means to be alert. To be alert. It means to be alert physically and or mentally. To be alert physically and or mentally. So you kind of have a picture of the three parts of man right there. You have the spirit, you have the physical body, and you have, you know, your mentality, your soul. All wrapped into one. God knows what we can and cannot do. God wants for us to be a little intimidated. Amen? He wants you to get white-eyed. He wants your uh, your, your, your palms to get sweaty. He wants your mouth to get a little dry. Because He wants for us to put our trust completely and totally in Him. God, I can't, but I can through you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Philippians, you know what Paul had that mindset of Philippians and how it says in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things. I can do all things through Christ. Through, somebody say through Christ. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hallelujah. You sure that you can minister at your dad's service? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He wouldn't have called me to it if he couldn't get me through it. Amen? I said he could anoint you. He could anoint me. He can use us in whatever capacity that he wants to use us. If we'll just be willing to be used. Sometimes he's going to ask us to step up and be a leader. We don't, uh, but how many knows a good leader has to be a good follower as well? But know this, you're not always, as a child of God, just going to be a follower. There are going to be times that he's going to ask you to step up to the plate. To do this, or to do that, or to uh, be the bigger person in the room, or whatever it may be, to be a leader. Me and Tanya have had a conversation many, many times. Because how many understands, or at least to a part, I know some of us do, that ministry is hard. Ministry can be tough, and and sometimes you feel so all alone in ministry along the way, and and no doubt she and I are in the same boat. Uh, We're kind of like Moses. Me, God, I can't even talk. 
And so uh, me and her have this same type of a mindset, and we've had this conversation before that, Lord, just, uh, just let us be under a pastor. And, man, we'll wear ourselves out. We'll just, we'll just give our lives for, you know, this church or whatever church it is. Lord, just, just let us be under a pastor because we're no leaders. We've had this conversation. Amen? But the Lord shows us through things that he can do things mighty. I, I look at this building, and this is not something to gloat about or or whatever, but just as an example, that God can take a backward, rural town boy and a shy young lady, and he can help them to have focus. He can help them to do things that otherwise is impossible to do. Because when you look at this, when people look at this and they say, wow, I mean, this, I mean let's just be honest, this, is, this will be over a million dollar project. When it's all said and done, everything's paid for up to this point. <laughs> Hallelujah. I said, he can do great and mighty things. I look back and say, Lord, there's no, there's no way that I can. He says, I know you can't, so I'm going to help you. Hallelujah. Just like he helped Joshua. Sometimes the Lord is going to ask you, sometimes he's going to ask me to step up and be a leader or to take the lead. Or tr our trust can't be in ourselves anyway. It has to be in Him. Amen? All of our trust has to be in God. You see, He's got a plan for your life. He's got a plan for my life. And that plan may call for us to step out and lead at times. It will. Let me just put it that way. His plan will call for you to step up and lead. You can't always be in the shadow of a Moses. I said you can't always be in the shadow of a Moses. There's times when God says, you. Yeah, go over there and talk to that person. Tell them Jesus loves them. I'm no preacher. He said, I didn't tell you that. <laughs> I didn't say that you were. But he said, go. How many knows he'll, 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 he'll qualify the called? Amen? If you'll just go. If you'll be strong and if you'll be courageous, he'll do with you what only God can do. And when you sit back and go, wow, God, I'm glad I listened. How many has ever God used before? Maybe just to speak to somebody like that. Tell them God loves them or whatever. And, and something just, something wonderful happened. They might have not gave their heart to the Lord, but they may have looked at you square in the eye and said, thank you, I needed that. This just happened, that just happened, or I've been having a bad day. Thank God when we listen to him and we are obedient to what he says to do. Hallelujah. Sometimes we have to step up. There's going to be times that we're, we're scared that we'll mess up. I mean, we do it all the time. <laughs> I'm scared, God. <laughs> Sometimes we'll be scared that we'll mess up. But God is saying to you, I'll be with you just like I was with my servant Moses. Have faith. Have confidence in what I'm telling you. If God says you can, you can. This carried on over to Joshua. Y'all mind if I unloosen my tie for a minute? It's choking me. <laughs> This carried on over with Joshua and carried on over with Caleb. As you know, the Lord says that this land is yours. Send spies into the land, and, and this land is yours. And they were the only two of all of them that come back and said, we, we, we got this. And the others went, oh, there's some big dudes over there. And they're going to whip us left and right, and I'm paraphrasing. They're going to beat us up. There's no way that we can overcome them. But this mindset carried on with Joshua. He says, if God says it, I believe it. And I'm going to stand on it. Hallelujah. There's going to be times that we're scared. But God is saying to you, I'll be with you. Have faith. Get it in your mind that you can and you will succeed in what place is in front of you. Whatever it is. Whatever's in front of you. Whatever God is bringing you to. 
Don't allow your emotions to cause you to not push yourself forward. He says, be strong, have confidence, faith, and then be courageous. What do you got to do? You got to step out. That's that mental thing. That's that physical thing. God said I could, but how many knows if you don't move, and if I don't move, it's not going to happen. What if Moses didn't lift his rod at the Red Sea? I said we got to move when God says move. We got to be strong and courageous so we can push forward. That leads us into our second point that God wants us to see. We've got to carry on with the work of God even in the face of tragedy. I said we've got to carry on with the work of God even in the face of tragedy. When God speaks to Joshua, no doubt his heart is very heavy. I mean, not only has his leader died, but his best friend spent a lot of time with him. For 40 years, think about this, for 40 years Moses had been instructing him. He woke up hearing his voice. Josh, get up, son. Let me sleep too late. He heard his voice each and every day. They've seen the best of times. They've seen the worst of times. They walked across the Red Sea on dry ground together and then seen the Egyptians get crushed by its waves. Hallelujah. They've also cried together when the children of Israel were worshiping a golden calf when they both come down off the mountain. You know, Moses is a little bit farther up, and he comes down, come on, Joshua. And they begin to hear in the camp, and I just know that they were torn up. They would begin to weep at what was going on. They've been hot. They've been cold. They've been hungry. They've been full. They've had all types of experiences together. They spent a whole lot of time together, and now all of a sudden, he's gone. How Joshua's heart must have ached. He must have felt within his heart, how can I continue on? How can I continue on? And now all of a sudden God says, Moses is gone, but I'm still here. Who ain't you glad? Moses is gone, yes, but I'm still here. Hallelujah. Oh, ain't you glad that no matter what life brings, God will never leave you, never leave you, nor forsake you. Hallelujah. Joshua had to feel helpless. His heart had to be so heavy. I'm sure that there may have been even moments that he just wanted to sit down and say, God, just get it over with. Take me too, like Moses did at one point. Our emotions, if we let them can at times put us into some dark places. I said, you need emotions. I don't ever want to be without my emotions. I've heard of people say, Lord, just sear my emotions. And then they regretted that they ever said that. They thought that somehow, some way, things would be easier to get through if they didn't have this as a confrontation to them. But have me understand, church, we just got to have balance in all things. We got to have balance. I'm glad that no matter where I am, God is right there beside me. He's not left. He's not gone. He wants me to grieve, and he knows I need to mourn. But he also reminds us that we're still, that he's still, that we're still here in this life. Amen. And that there is still some work that we've got to finish for the kingdom. You're here because he's not finished with you. I'm here because he's not finished with me. We still have a work to do. That word courage by definition is this. Strength in the face, in the face of pain and grief. Think about that. Strength right in the face of pain and grief. What's it mean? You, you keep on keeping on, right? 
There's been some times in the last several days that I felt, how can I continue? My heart is so heavy with my dad, not here. Sometimes I've just felt like laying down in the middle of my grief and let it swallow me up. I know many of you have been there. This is the first for me. It's in those times that it's hard to find courage. Amen? It's hard to find strength. I said when it's right there in your face. Right in the midst of pain. Right in the midst of grief. It's hard to find courage to carry on. But you know what you do as a believer? You start looking toward your heavenly father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You start looking toward your heavenly father and say, God, help me. God, help me. Hallelujah. Psalm 46 and verse 1. I don't know what the psalmist might have been going through at this time. But he says that, that God, he's your refuge and strength and he's a very present help in trouble. Hallelujah. I said, he's your refuge. You can run to him and find shelter. Hallelujah. When you just want to be swallowed up by whatever it is at the moment, oh, you can run to your Heavenly Father. He says, come here, I'll give you refuge. No, nothing like the big arms of your Heavenly Father. Hallelujah. He says, you can find refuge. You can find strength. Hallelujah. I'm a very present help in what you're going through. He's your biggest cheerleader. Ain't that something? God is rah, rah, rah for you. God is cheering you on. Come on, you can do it. Come on, you can do it. Sometimes we think God is a million miles off and he's down there looking us right in the eye saying, come on, you can do it. Be strong and be courageous. You can do all things through me. Hallelujah. He's the one who lets you have your moments and then brings you back to reality. You ever been there? Sometimes I've just had a fit or whatever. And then say, look up and say, God, you're still there? <laughs> yes, I'm just waiting for you to get through. How many understands he lets us grieve? He lets us have that time of sorrow. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy is going to come in the morning. No matter what happens in life, we are still the children of God. No matter what happens today, no matter what happens tomorrow, I am still a child of the Most High God. We are still commissioned by Him to go and to tell a lost and a dying world that Jesus can save them. Even in the face of tragedy, even in the face of heartache, we can do it. My daddy's story ended as a beautiful testimony. Because somebody chose to keep preaching, even in the midst of tragedy. Even in the midst of their life, back at whatever time that they didn't think they was going to make it, but they kept on, keep it on. And one day, my father gave his heart to Jesus because that person was strong and courageous. Hallelujah. I said, my daddy's in heaven today because someone chose to not be taken down by their circumstances. But they decided that there was still a lot of work that needed to be done. Church, the fields are white. That means they're ripe. They are white and they are ready for harvest. And he's saying like the song says, who, who will go and work in my fields? Who will go and, and bring the harvest in? Uh, are we going to let things and circumstances stand in a way I'm just, I, I, I just can't do it. I'm just going to let somebody else. Are we going to step up and do what God says to do? Amen. Are we going to stand in the gap maybe for somebody, some other Richard Malone? Amen. That needs to hear the gospel message. That needs to hear Jesus still saves. I said, we need to keep on pressing on till everybody hears and everybody knows 
You see, God is with us, and he's telling us, just like he did Joshua, just like I was with Moses, I am with you. Hallelujah. To be strong and very courageous. Church, if we'll be strong and very courageous, we will reap a harvest if we don't faint. Amen. I said we will reap a harvest if we keep on keeping on. I can't do it by myself. But I know I've got to stand. I know I've got to trust. I know I've got to have confidence in my spirit. I, I know I've got to know that what God says is true. And then I've got to talk to myself. Listen, self. You ever had to talk to yourself? Get out of bed. Get past this situation. Get past that situation. Oh, don't get hung up on this. Don't get hung up on that. Just keep doing what God has called you to do. And he says what? You'll have success. I'll be with you. Hallelujah. Wouldn't it be great when you got to heaven that there's a whole line just waiting to come up and say thank you. Thank you, Brother Tommy. Thank you, Brother Buddy. You was a witness. You don't know how much you helped me that day. I seen what you went through. I seen what you endured, but still you came through with victory. Hallelujah. How many knows it's all right for people to see our human side? We're not 10 foot tall and bulletproof. But also people need to see that we're full of faith. And that we practice what we preach. And that God can help us. Come on. Hallelujah. That we can do, he can do exceeding abundantly through us. If we'll just do what he says. Hallelujah. I'm so thankful that God helps us to be strong and very courageous. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. Without me, you can't even get up. I don't know about you, but when I get up, I say, thank you, Lord, for getting me up. <laughs> oh, you start thinking about that day, you went, oh, <laughs> and you couldn't hardly get up, see? You learn to be thankful. We learn to be thankful. I'm so thankful that God is there. That no matter what we face, even in the face of tragedy, church, we've got a work to do. Somebody needs to hear about Jesus. Satan wants to bring you so far down that you can't see the bottom, that you need to look up to see the bottom. He wants to keep you from getting others to the cross. But be strong and be very courageous and God will help you. Let's all stand. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Ooh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the privilege to be in your house once again. We thank you, Lord, for your presence is here. Lord, we thank, Lord, our hearts are a little heavy today. Some more than others. But Lord, at the same time, we know that you're a good God. You're a great big God. You're a merciful God. Lord, we thank you for your plan that you have. Plans that we don't know about. Plans that we can't figure out. But Lord, even as Jeremiah 29, 11 says, they're good plans. They're good plans. Because you love us so much. To give us a future. To give us a hope. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Maybe you're here this morning. Maybe you're going through something. You say, Pastor, I'm, I'm facing some things. I'm going through some things. I'm going through some heartache. I'm going through some pain. I'm going through some questions. Why? I'm going with, through with some, some struggles with my faith. If that's you this morning, any of those things, are, that you know that you need to ask God for God's help. If that's you, you slip up a hand. You say, that's me, Pastor. That's me, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Anybody else? You say, that's me. I'm going, yes, I'm going through something. I'm, yes, I need God's help, yes. I need God's help, yes. I need God's intervention, yes. Heavenly Father, I thank you for these hands. I thank you for these hearts.